Hello, in this video we are going to talk about the process of training neural networks and we are going to uh, implement a very simple example in PyTorch. Our example is linear regression. We can think of linear regression as a neural network with only one neuron and with the transfer function linear. Let's see how can we implement that. Okay, let's start. The first thing that we are going to do is to import the libraries. And then I'm going to define a synthetic data set for doing that, I'm going to define a tensor called X, and we are going to create that using torch.a range. So this is going to create a tensor between two uh, defined start and stopping points. So I'm going to say that's going to start at minus 5 and finishes at 5. And the distance between these data points is going to be point 0.1. Let's look at the size of the X. We say print X size, X dot size. This is a one dimensional tensor that has 100 elements. But what we need is a matrix with 100 rows and one column. For doing that, I'm gonna use the function view. For number of rows, we just put minus one. And for number of columns, I say I need one column. Minus one means that it's gonna figure it out itself what the number of rows should be based on having only one column. So if we do that, now it's good to go. So we have 100 rows and one column. X is going to be our input. Also, we have underlying function. I'm gonna call this variable y no noise. And say that that is two times x plus 3. Now let's print its size. If you look at the size, we see that is 100 by 1 because x was 100 by 1 and when we multiply a scalar to a vector like this, so all of the elements of that are going to be multiplied and also when we add a scalar, same thing, point wise all of the elements will be added by 3. So this is our underlying function, but in reality, we don't see such a function out of our data collections. We usually have some noise. Let's add some noise. For defining our noise, we are going to use the function torch.randn. So let's define that. We say noise equals torch.randn. And the size of this noise vector is going to be same as the size of our x. We say x dot size okay and we can also print the noise so it's gonna be a 100 um, rows one column and all of them are random numbers with the mean zero and variance one so it's gonna be positive or negative but you can see that's gonna be something like that let me also print its uh, size Again, size is 100 by 1. Now let's add the noise to the y no noise. We say y equals uh, y no noise plus noise that we define. So this is 1 by 100 by 1. This is 100 by 1. It's going to be a point wise adding all of the elements. You can also scale this. For example, I can put 0.5 here uh, to have a little less noise added. So this is going to be our y. y is going to be our target or output. So x is going to be input and the y is output. Now let's plot that. So for plotting that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say plt.plot. So x is a tensor. If I want to plot that, I say x numpy and y numpy. And I'm also going to plot these data points with the color red and the symbol plus. I can also label this as Y. And also I'm going to plot on the line function that we created this Y based on that was our Y without noise or no noise. Okay. Next I'm going to give some labels for the X and Y coordinates. We say plt dot x label x and plt dot y label as y 
I'm gonna have the legend for this figure and say legend and we are going to plot okay let's run it we get this so we have y no noise which was our underlying function with a solid blue line and then we have this y plus which is our target so in reality we don't see this underlying blue function so in reality what we see is this one so we have the x as the input and y is our output or target so for example for a data collection this y could be a reading from a sensor that has a noise so again x is our input and y is our output or target now we have our data ready let's create the model now we are going to define a model for this data and when we look at this data we see that it sounds like we have a linear relationship and we could actually fit a line to that okay that's gonna be our uh, assumption and we are going to go forward with that one and we are going to say that okay this is a linear relationship here between these points that we are going to find that linear relationship so we are going to fit a line to this data so for doing that we could say our line could be something like this so x is our input and y hat is going to be the prediction of our machine learning model we could say that our neural network or machine learning model is going to be something like this so it gets the input multiplies that with the weight and adds that a bias to that output y hat is its prediction so and we want that prediction to be close to this y so if I adjust W and B here in a way that for all of these data points that I give as X to this model that gives me the very close Y hat, we have a good model. So our task is actually finding W and B here. And we are going to find that in an optimization manner. In a training process, we are going to gradually understand what is the optimum weight and bias here. For doing that, we know that we are going to find w and b so we should define them as variables that we can get derivatives based on them let me initialize w and b here and say w equals torch dot tensor for example we could say initialize with point one and then the most important part is that we have to say requires grad is true because we are going to optimize based on w similar for b we say torch dot tensor and we say for example another one it doesn't matter that uh, number now we have these two now i have to define my loss function to get a derivative based on these w and b and optimize that so what could be our loss function let's think about that so we said that we want this y hat output of our neural network be very close to our target y so for doing that we can do this we say our loss equals torch dot mean of y hat minus y to the power of two so this is a point wise difference between them so it could be a positive or negative by this power to the two we make sure that is positive and then we calculate its mean and you say okay this is a loss function and if we do that so our loss function actually is a function of w and b so we can actually print those things let me run this and let me print the loss we get a tensor difference between these two vectors to the power of two and the mean of that so I have this value but if you look at here we see that this loss is a function of w and b so it is possible to get the derivative of loss with respect to w and b and minimize that so for doing that we are going to do this we are going to use the function loss dot backward if you remember loss.backward is going to take derivative with respect to all of the variables that is defined this is a partial derivatives because now we have two variables 
So it's going to take the derivative of loss with respect to W and with respect to B. Okay? And after doing that, in an iterative manner, we should be able to adjust the W and B. Let's do that. And let me actually um, make that iterative loop. So let's say 4 in range of epochs. We want to do this. But what is an epoch? Epoch means that every time we go over all of the database and we update the weights and biases, like here. So we, we use all of the database that we have as X input and we optimize W and B in the loop. So we call that one epoch. And we need to know how many times we want to do this to optimize our weights and biases. We can define that. Let me just define that up up here. I could say epochs equals, for example, 10. For now, let's say epoch is 1. We are just going to update for one iteration. And then we increase that and we get to the optimum value. After I got the derivatives, so I can see the variable, uh, for example, w grad. So I can say, for example, let's print the w dot grad dot theta. So let's do that. So you see w dot grad data is a tensor that we have. Also, I have w itself. Let's print that one. What is the w? W is 0.1. That is the one that we defined here. We are still in the first iteration. So I have the W. Now I have its gradient. So I'm going to update this W using this W.grad data. And we are going to do this. We are going to say W.data equals W.data minus a number that we call it uh, learning rate, for example, 0.01 times w.grad.data. We took the derivative of the loss function, which is giving us the w.grad.data, and we are going to move in reverse direction of that to update our w. And we are going to do this process for our bias. Let's say b.data equals b.data minus 0.01 times b grad dot data. Okay. Now we updated our W and B. Okay, after updating W and B, we should also do this. We say W dot grad dot data dot zero underscore and B dot grad dot data dot zero underscore so this section is mainly because of the, how the pytorch works and doesn't actually relate to the our uh, fundamental mathematical concepts or algorithm so this is just because of the pytorch and let me show you an online example that explains this uh, issue very well so for example we have a variable x here that we define and i have a for loop uh, that is going to go for five times and we calculate the sine of x as y and we get the derivative of the sine which is cosine and we know the cosine of 0 is 1 so it means that if I uh, print this function we are going to get 1 every time so if we do that we see that is not the case so the first time it is 1 the second one is 2 then 3 4 5 but that is not correct we expect every time to see 1 the reason this problem happens is that PyTorch is going to accumulate the x.grad over time. And because of that, we have to put the x.grad.data.0 underline. And if we do that, it's correct. So that is mainly because of the PyTorch. So uh, that is the reason we have these two lines here. Okay, we are pretty much done. So we can actually train it for more epochs and update the weights. To have a better understanding, let's plot the data and the predicted uh, function for that. Okay, using these few lines, we should be able to plot the functions. First, we say that we want a new figure for each epoch. Then I'm plotting the x and y. y is our target, which is our 
ground truth uh, uh, we plotted as before then I'm going to plot the y hat for the y hat before using the function dot numpy we are also going to use the detach because this was a function that had this w and b no longer for plotting we need them and we also just define some range for x and y and we are also plotting the value of w and b on our plots okay let's initialize again and run the network after first iteration w and b gradually change a little and then they are changing changing and w is increasing so we know the best uh, fit is actually w2 and b3 because we created this function we know what is the best answer is after 10 epochs we got w1.6 and b.7 if we look at here we want uh, wb2 and bb3 so let's actually train it a little further for example let's train it for 100 and see what we get and finally okay we got w as 2 and b 2.6 which is pretty good for our data considering the amount of noise that we have okay and also let's look at the our loss so let's see what happened to our loss function so for doing that i can um, actually record the loss so i'm gonna define an empty list here at the beginning and i can just um actually i don't need these prints anymore can comment them out and I can just here add that loss function uh, to the list say append and loss dot if you remember this loss function was a tensor and I need a, a member from Python now to record in my uh, loss uh, list so for doing that I use item let me also plot the loss function at the end so I can here actually plot the loss function okay let me initialize again and run it again and then after it is done I'm gonna you see how it is adjusting the weights and after it is done I'm going to plot the loss function let's plot it so this is our loss function and you see we minimize that loss function it means that our output of our prediction which is y hat is now getting very very close to the target y so because our loss function is a difference between these two arrays so we have the y hat as the prediction of our model and y as a target and loss is a difference between these two that we are minimizing through this process so by doing this is pretty much we are done with our uh, first linear model so we define the model here as y hat equals wx plus b and we calculated loss and we took the derivative of the loss here and we update our weights and biases by doing that we should be able to fit a line to our data usually we can make this a little nicer let me actually put that in a function let's say define for example train here and i can give the number of epochs as the input to this function epochs and if we do that i just need to indent everything inside that and after that i can just here for example train epochs okay and it's a little more organized one thing that is very effective in our training process is this number here which is our learning rate let me define that separately here we usually use lr for learning rate to one for example and here i can just replace them with lr lr and okay now let's talk a little about this learning rate so we saw that for our model here we have two parameters we have this w and b 
So this W and B are the parameters of the model. So things that we are going to optimize to have the best predictions. So these are the parameters of the model. But we could have some other parameters. We call them hyperparameters. For example, this learning rate. This learning rate here we define as 0 0.01, but it could be a different number. So that is the parameters we use during training to get the W and B to the optimal value. But this is not the parameters of the model itself. This is the parameters we use during training. And because of that, we are going to call it hyperparameters. So there are two complete different types of parameters. One is the parameters of the model that we call them parameters like W and B. And the other type of parameters are hyperparameters, things that we use for training a model. But basically, any other parameters that is not a parameter of a model itself, it's not a weights and biases, those are considered as hyperparameters. Okay, let's go over what we did in this video again. At the beginning, we defined our synthetic data set, and we showed how to add noise to the synthetic data set. This was our data set x was our input and y which is a noisy um, reading is our output or target and we define the linear model our intention was to minimize the loss and the loss function is the difference between our predicted output and the actual output which is our ground truth or our target and we try to minimize loss by taking the derivative of that and then updating weights and biases using gradient descent, which means that we are moving back part of the gradient and updating W and P. And we show that uh, by doing that, we should be able to optimize that the function. And we can see we can fit the line to the data set. And we also showed that um, how to plot the loss function, something that we minimize here. Okay, this is all we have for this session and thank you so much again for watching this video.